nearly 2,000 people have fled their homes is that that lava is moving 50 feet per hour. Rare but dramatic supervolcano eruptions can cause widespread devastation and alter global climate patterns for decades. A recent study suggests that these places may continue to have eruptions, albeit of a smaller size, for thousands of years after the initial event. An estimated 1,200 cubic miles of magma were ejected during a super eruption on the Indonesian island of Sumatra some 74,000 years ago. The Toba eruption was the most significant volcanic event of the past two million years. More than a hundred times as much magma was released as in the Krakatoa eruption of 1883, and enough ash was produced to cover the whole United Kingdom at a depth of around one millimeter. Additionally, there is mounting evidence that the same volcano is stirring to life and preparing to rain destruction down upon us. Could a worldwide disaster that virtually extinguished almost all human life have been triggered by the Toba supervolcano? Does this volcano now warrant our concern? Let's find out. Mount Etna, one of the most active volcanoes in the world, has erupted once again in Italy. The latest in a series of tremors from the Sicilian mountain in mid-August evolved into a lava fountain, creating a volcanic cloud dispersed in a southerly direction and temporarily closing a nearby airport. This comes after Hawaii's Mauna Loa volcano, the world's largest active volcano, awoke from its slumber in 2022 and erupted for the first time in nearly 40 years. While it appeared that these eruptions were contained, other volcanoes throughout the world provide an even greater threat. Around the Pacific Ocean's periphery is a nearly circular collection of subduction zones known as the Ring of Fire. Most of the world's largest earthquakes and most of the world's deadliest volcanoes are found here. The latter forms when a descending plate grinds past an ascending slab and abruptly slips. Volcanic islands form extensive chains or arcs on maps of the Ring of Fire. Japan, the Aleutians, the Philippines, and Indonesia are just a few examples of countries with volcanic islands in the middle of the ocean. Others are located on the continent's fringes, where a thinner oceanic plate is subducting under a more robust continental plate. The Andes, the Central American Volcanic Arc, and the Cascade Mountains in Northern California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia are all examples of land-based volcanoes. The Malay Archipelago consists of a group of islands in Southeast Asia that are a part of Indonesia and Malaysia. It is home to some of the world's most impressive and catastrophic volcanic eruptions. Furthermore, this volcanic chain is home to near-constant eruptions. In addition to hundreds of dormant and weathered volcanoes, Indonesia is home to 127 active volcanoes, making it the country with the highest concentration of volcanoes in the world. More than 1,171 volcanic eruptions have been documented across Indonesia. As a result, practically the entire country is impacted by the ongoing volcanic activity. Toba's super eruptions, the greatest in Earth's history, were fueled by a continual magma buildup as determined by a combination of geologic dating and computer modeling. In order to predict future eruptions, scientists have developed a revolutionary method based on the magmatic tail behind the Toba Volcanic System's super eruptions. Geologists have found common warning indicators, including increased earthquake activity, ground swelling or deformation, and the release of strange odors that can be used to predict volcanic activity. Super eruptions are particularly difficult to forecast because of their rarity and the paucity of research into their causes. Now, scientists from China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Switzerland have created a novel method for assessing a volcano's eruptive potential by rebuilding the magma reservoirs beneath Toba that served as a prelude to and catalyst for the massive explosions. Zircon, a mineral known for its ability to crystallize and endure over time, was used to determine the eruption date and reveal the magmatism history of the volcano. Zircon dating has been around for a while, but researchers improved upon it by adding in some computational modeling. By simulating data and comparing it to actual measurements, they determined the impact of factors like magma flow on the age at which Zircon crystallized. The findings showed that common warning indicators like surface deformation and petrol emissions would not alter considerably before super eruptions, which is a striking finding. They also found that the average rate of magma inflow was the same both before and after the super eruptions. 
Toba's super eruptions were not caused by an abrupt rise in magma volume, but rather by a gradual buildup of magma over long periods of time, simmering beneath for hundreds of thousands to millions of years. Researchers discovered that recurring eruptions resulted from the gradual maturation and temperature increase of the overlaying crust. Constant crustal warming delays magma cooling, which speeds up magma accumulation, which in turn increases the frequency of super eruptions. Our tale begins some 74,000 years ago, on a terrible day. The Earth was emerging from one of its more recent ice ages, while climatic differences between glacial and interglacial periods were very minor in the tropics. Massive bison, big deer, wild horses, and a plethora of smaller mammals coexisted with woolly rhinoceroses and mammoths in the icy parts of Eurasia during the late Ice Age. These big animals were eaten by giant lions, saber-toothed cats, and enormous bears. By that time, people had settled much of the Old World but had not yet made it to the Americas or Australia. The first modern humans, Homo sapiens, arose in southern Africa between 100,000 and 300,000 years ago, yet the vast majority of the population consisted of more primitive Homo sapiens. They left Africa some 74,000 years ago and may have settled throughout most of Asia and even some of present-day southeastern Europe. But the Neanderthals, who had migrated to the northern ice sheet's edge, were still the dominant force in Europe. Neanderthals, in contrast to ancient Homo sapiens, had a shorter, stockier, more muscular frame and shorter arms, making them well-suited for tackling huge animals while also minimizing heat loss in the chilly environment. Many of the islands that are now part of Indonesia and Malaysia were populated by ancient humans from as far away as Africa. East of Java and Bali, on the island now called Flores, a diminutive form of Homo emerged. These humans, now known as hobbits, only reached a height of around 3 feet 7 inches, making them shorter than any adult pygmy today. Some anthropologists even dispute if they are even in our species, Homo, due to their diminutive brain size. Flores is one of the many islands that make up the Malay archipelago, which also includes the larger islands of Sumatra and Java, and numerous smaller islands. Volcanoes, both active and extinct, have been used exclusively in the construction of these islands. They have a tropical climate and thick vegetation. Vegetation thrives in the fertile volcanic soil, to the point where it can be difficult to spot the actual volcanoes. Numerous volcanoes have erupted during the past million years in northern Sumatra, roughly 1,200 miles northwest of Flores. One specific volcano, now known as Mount Obey, had been active for a long time leading up to the terrible day in question. Gradually, it had risen until it loomed over the bush almost 3,000 feet in height. There were splits appearing all over this enormous dome. The sulfur in the steam released by the hot springs and fumaroles made the area smell like rotten eggs. Mount Toba had been rumbling with tiny and major earthquakes for a whole year before it finally began to erupt, covering the surrounding jungle in steam and ash. It's safe to assume that the local fauna and populace fled in terror at the sound of them, only to forget about them once everything calmed down. The ash was gone after a few years of rain in the tropics and the quick expansion of rainforest. Smaller eruptions that release steam and ash have become more common, however. As the jungle around the volcano was consumed by molten pumice and ash, the landscape quickly became arid and stony. This was the condition of things on the morning of that fateful day some 74,000 years ago. When the enormous dome began vibrating with such force that it shook all of Sumatra, things truly began to move. From the peak came a series of steam and ash jets. An explosion followed, unlike anything that had ever been heard by mankind throughout their evolutionary history. In contrast, the sonic boom from the 1883 eruption of the Krakatau volcano in Indonesia was audible from as far as 5,000 miles distant and circled the globe seven times. That explosion was the greatest heard in modern history, with a force 5,000 times that of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. But the energy unleashed by Mount Toba's eruption was equivalent to a million tons of explosives, making it 40 times more powerful than the greatest hydrogen bomb ever produced by humans, 1,000 times more powerful than Krakatau, and 3,000 times more powerful than the 1980 explosion of Mount St. Helens. Therefore, the sonic boom from Toba must have been loud to animals and people for several miles around and must have bounced around the world repeatedly, outshining any other sound produced on Earth in the previous 28 million years. Krakatau and Tambora's eruptions were both significant, 
yet they pale in comparison to the massive eruptions of ancient times. A volcano is considered a supervolcano whenever it has produced more than 240 cubic miles of ejecta during an eruption, a VI-8. Only a handful of VI-8 or greater eruptions have been recorded throughout Earth's history. One example is the 27.8 million years ago explosion in central Colorado that created the La Garita Caldera. However, the 27 million years ago eruption of Toba was the most significant event on the list. A more recent calculation shows that the ejecta volume during Toba's eruption was greater than 320 cubic miles. Ash deposits as thick as 2,000 feet around the vent were left by the eruption of Toba, which destroyed nearly 12,500 square miles. Ashes were blown into drifts up to 20 feet deep in one location in central India, covering much of Southeast Asia with a coating around 6 inches thick in most areas. Ashes 30 feet deep blanketed the entire country of Malaysia. The primary eruption of Toba lasted for nearly two weeks, according to geologists. Ash from Toba has been discovered in the South China Sea, suggesting that the eruption took place during the summer in the Northern Hemisphere. A huge mushroom cloud of heated ash ascended thousands of miles into the air after the explosion. Meanwhile, enormous turbulent clouds traveling at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour were carried down the mountain by the superheated ash and gases that reached temperatures of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. They set fire to the jungle and burned it to the ground, clearing up a wide area. Death and destruction ensued wherever the ash and pumice settled, which included not just Sumatra but also the majority of the other islands. The ashfall reached all the way to India, more than 1,800 miles away, and left a thick layer there. Following the eruption, the ash cover in India mixed with other strata and drifted downslope, generating secondary ash deposits several feet deep, similar to what happened after the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. The ash was transformed into a cement-like muck by the tropical rains, which blocked rivers and paths and brought down tree limbs and even whole trees. It's likely that thousands of pounds of wet ash buried little huts as well. Although sea levels were lower at the time of the eruption, a tsunami caused by the resulting earthquakes is nevertheless believed to have wiped off a large number of coastal residents. The jungle's inhabitants and wildlife discovered their world in ruins, and it's likely that many of the survivors starved to death or choked to death on the dry, dusty ash. Microscopic shards of glass like those found in volcanic ash pierce the lining of the lungs, causing them to scar and eventually become clogged with fluid. Life in the jungles located within a few thousand km of the erupting volcano was impacted in this way. However, not only were locations outside of the heaviest ashfall hit, the clouds traveled all over the world, depositing a layer of ash on the ocean floor thousands of miles away from the epicenter of the eruption. Toba's massive ejection of sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide into the sky, on top of the solid material, likely had a profound impact on global climate. The former is estimated at 11 billion short tons. Sulfuric acid is deadly to all forms of life on Earth and has been found in Greenland's ice cap. The energy released by Toba was equivalent to that of 1,100,000 metric tons of TNT. However, the 720 cubic miles of dust-sized particles of volcanic debris pushed into the stratosphere, more than 6 miles above sea level, had the greatest impact of the eruption. At that altitude, they were carried along by the jet stream, and an ash cloud quickly encircled the globe. When this occurs, the amount of sunlight that reaches Earth decreases, leading to anomalous cooling. Global average temperatures decreased by around 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit for more than a year after the 1883 Krakatau eruption due to the massive volume of ash blasted into the stratosphere, which blocked sunlight. For a long period of time, weather patterns were chaotic, and average temperatures didn't stabilize again until 1888. For months following the eruption, the sky was clouded and sometimes significantly blackened due to the massive amount of particulate matter in the stratosphere causing, for example, magnificent orange-red sunsets, like the one shown in Edvard Munch's The Scream, 1893. In addition to the actual blue moon, the world witnessed rare atmospheric effects such as a bishop's ring, a thin brown halo around the sun, and the volcanic purple hue at dusk. When Mount Tambora, also in Indonesia, erupted in 1815, it sent so much dust into the stratosphere that it altered global weather patterns and was felt as far away as Europe. 
crop failures, animal malnutrition, and epidemics of disease, particularly typhus, and famine affected people all over the world as a result of the ashes cooling effect. The following year, 1816, became known as the Year Without a Summer due to the chilly, dark, and rainy summer months experienced across North America and Eurasia. Snow fell in New York, New England, and many European cities as late as June. While spending the month of January in Switzerland at Lord Byron's residence near Lake Geneva, guests Percy Shelley and Mary Shelley passed the time by swapping gothic horror tales. Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, was written by Mary Shelley during that dreary summer. Toba's 74,000-year-old eruption was 1,000 times more powerful than either Tambora's or Krakatau's. As a result, temperatures around the world plunged by as much as 9 degrees Fahrenheit to an average of 60 degrees Fahrenheit after only three years, and it took a full decade to recover to pre-eruption levels. Most of the high mountains became inhospitable as the tree line and snow line slid down to a level that is now 10,000 feet lower. Greenland ice cores include ash and old air bubbles that provide evidence of this severe cooling. When this awful period came, what happened to the people and animals? According to several geneticists and archaeologists, only around 1,000 to 10,000 breeding pairs of people worldwide survived after the Toba catastrophe. Indications of a human genetic bottleneck occurring around the time of the eruption, as well as geologic evidence of Toba's scale and atmospheric impacts, lend credence to this theory. A genetic bottleneck occurs when a population's total number of members declines to such a low point that the variety of its genes is drastically reduced and all progeny share the uncommon genes of the few survivors. According to the molecular clocks of these organisms, which show how long ago a genetic change occurred, both the human louse and the ulcer-causing bacterium Helicobacter pylori experienced bottlenecks around the time of Toba. Several other species, including tigers and pandas, experienced a bottleneck at about the same time, according to their molecular clocks. Toba was the world's largest volcanic explosion since modern humans first arose, and it nearly wiped out the human race along with many other species. The Toba eruption was one of the worst natural disasters in Earth's history. It dwarfed later eruptions like Tambora, Krakatau, and Mount St. Helens by hundreds to thousands of times. This event occurred 28 million years ago. Some scientists believe that the impacts of Toba were comparable to those of earlier mass extinction events in Earth's history, and that the calamity was as bad as the one that killed off the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Few people, and even fewer experts, are aware of the incredible story of the Toba eruption and its consequences. It wasn't until the late 1990s that scientists realized the calamity had happened. At that point, researchers were already looking for proof of it in a variety of domains, including geology, genetics, and others. Now, what's the good news? The scientists estimate that there will be another 600,000 years before Toba's next massive super eruption. We are sorry to say that the news is also bad. There won't be any unusual geological phenomena preceding the eruption. The buildup will be gradual and quiet, so we won't even be able to hear it coming. The world may literally be ending and we would be unconsciously watching videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.